The first thing I discovered about being on a team was I have to serve the song. If you want to be good at something, you got to put in the time, you got to work hard. When you bring me into your organization, I'm going to motivate, I'm going to entertain, I'm going to educate, I'm going to play rock and roll drums with rock and roll music. Everybody's going to leave with something. I love the shirt, I love the boots. Kenny, always a pleasure. John Fogarty, ladies and gentlemen. I motivate my audiences from my experiences playing with people like Sting, Elton John, people like Buddy Guy, Ray Charles, uh, Avril Lavigne, Michelle Branch. Do your homework. I'm like famous for this. Just ridiculous amount of work. Now I don't want to tell you how to do your business. I, I think your drummer may be a little anemic. <laughs> And boom, we are live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Meet and Greet, a virtual meet and greet with the one and only Kenny Aronoff. My name is Peter Clark. I will be moderating today. Kenny, how are you, my fine friend, today? I'm great, Peter. And I'll tell you what, that intro that you created <laughs> is so badass. I got to give you kudos, man. Every time I see it, I'm like, wow, you really <laughs> like, did a great, you did a great job. I mean, Thank you, all credit to some other people that put some yes. stuff together, but you really, you took it and refined it, and it's it's really, really powerful and great. And oh, thank you, man. man. Good job, I, Peter. I hey, appreciate that. Peter, let people know where you're. You're in Calgary, right? I am. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, we. I had the great pleasure of meeting Kenny. Of course, I've known him in, in my mind my whole life as a musician, but uh, we met a couple of years ago when you were up in Canada doing... Um, a promo for for uh, hired gun uh, yeah. which which is a unbelievable documentary everybody you can find it on netflix right now uh we actually had uh fran who was the director of that uh yeah. movie, just recently on july yeah. 4th which was fantastic we weren't expecting that i wasn't yeah. anyway we, we just did this impromptu yeah. call-in show and then of course fran says hey i, I directed this movie i was like are you kidding <laughs> so uh, yeah Kenny and i met uh in edmonton actually i'm based in calgary drove up to and we met mm -hmm. there and um we chatted and we've been chatting ever since and uh we thought you know what we need to we need if the world needs anything right now it's more kenny aronoff so that's why we're <laughs> <laughs> well uh this show we're gonna have a surprise for the audience because we're gonna have a lot of kenny aronoff oh i can't <laughs> listen i yeah. that yeah. happened late just before we started this show i was like what is going on <laughs> the, you you people are, are gonna have some double trouble <laughs> oh big double trouble coming right now coming up this gonna be great it's going to be fun. And so I no, believe, I, I think, I think my mom, she's 94 years old. I think she's watching this. Is she the, watching? And my sister's with her. And, and uh, d seeing this type of thing to her is like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, it's like she, the internet, she still doesn't get the grasp of what the hell is this Zoom stuff? And what are you talking <laughs> about? Uh, I don't know. It's like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, listen, if your mom is watching right now. I'll yeah. send a message to her. We. Yeah. Kenny and I ask ourselves, what the heck is all of this all the time? Like, we struggle with this all the time. So don't feel out of place by not You're knowing always, the technology. Yeah. How about, how about the a the, uh, couple weeks ago, literally 60, what was it, 60 seconds? And we were trying to figure out a technical oh. problem. 
totally, totally. And you know what? The last two shows, just you know, on another on other channels as well. Same thing, my friend. You know, there's always it's it's yeah. internet. We're at the mercy of that. We also want to know, uh, let everyone know that uh, you know we're going to be bringing in guests. Uh, we're going to do live. This is the whole point of the virtual meet and greet. Yeah. We did a show in very impromptu on July 4th because Kenny wanted to reach out to everybody during the holiday during that holiday, and uh, and so we started taking some calls, which we didn't know was going to work or not. So we tried it again today, and we wanted to follow up with some more people that uh, yeah. couldn't get through. And uh, so, Kenny, we're just going to go Let's through go. this. Let's go. And I hope everybody in the green room, you're ready to rock and roll. So when I come to you, you better have your question ready. We, we really appreciate that. And uh, and 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 please, everybody watching, we, we, we want to make sure everyone has fair, equal time. So we're not going to try to rush people, but we're certainly going to try to move along. So yeah. I hope you can appreciate that. So thanks for doing this, Kenny. I, I know that you're, you're uh, the people that all the comments that I get anyway, and the messages that are sent to me are always very, uh, they're always very thankful and they have great gratitude for you, you know, spending your time like this. So yeah. why is it important for you to do this, by the way, just to reconnect with people right now? Oh, I've always been somebody who likes to connect with people. I mean, I, I'm, uh, you know, I like to connect, uh, start communicating, and then collaborate. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, that's, that's kind of that's the music thing, you know. That exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you're so used. To, I, I'm, I'm just uh, playing from my own mind. Is that you, you've played in bands your whole life, especially music, as a, as a drummer. You know, guitar players can kind of go out on their own sometimes. It's a little tougher for drummers. Drummers are yeah. part part of this core group of people, so you're always yeah. on a team, and that's yeah. part of your speaking. I know the presentations that you do for speaking and yeah. so on to do with team building and working for the team and so on. So you're right. You're a very collaborative person, and you always want to be uh, you're around people. So yeah, I, I do. I do. I love it. Well, I appreciate you doing it with us today. It's fantastic. So we're going to start going through these questions. And Kenny, I have no idea what they're going to ask. All so right. I hope they're nice and polite people. I hope you got good fans. I hope they're very kind. And That's okay. I'm good. You can't, you can't <laughs> you throw can't me anything. Kenny. You can't scare. That's the coolest thing right now. You can't scare. So I'm going to jump into, I, I see a name, Nina and Ellie. Now, I again. That's I my mom. And sister. Is that Nina? That's Nina, my sister. Oh, I had no idea. That's oh, we're right. oh, come on. Yeah, Man. that's my sister and my mom. Bring them on. There they are. <laughs> they are. Look at you. Let me, here, let me back this off a little bit and see if I can. There's a bigger picture. Yeah. Oh, look at your beautiful mom. Oh, are you cute? <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I just want you guys to know you're all over the world right now. You want my autograph? We didn't know we were going to be on. <laughs> my, hey, Nina, you... Nina, you have the hair I always wish I had. Oh. I have the hair. I have, have the hair. Now, let me tell you something. You know, that that's my mom. She's uh, about, how old are you now, Ma? 21 or something? Yeah, about 32. Okay. You, I should uh, You're lying. It's more like 30, 30, I think, right? right? 40, 30, 30. Well, anyway, uh, that is right there. They're in the house I grew up in. Oh, Matt, this, okay. So, Kenny, you know what I have to do right now, don't you? I, I wasn't going to do this right yeah. away and jump to what we're going to do right now. Yeah, I have, I have no do choice it. now because this is so awesome. Look, look who's going to join this party, Nina. And I'm sorry. And, and, and your mom's name? What's your mom's name? I'm Ellie, sorry. Ellie. 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 Uh, Ellie. It's so nice to meet you. And so, look, look who else is going to join you right now. Look at this. Oh my goodness! He almost looks like my son. <laughs> well, he, he he is your son. It's the other one. Oh, it's the other one. I only I'm wanted two, but I won't tell you which one I'm throwing away. <laughs> so hey, everybody John, tuning so, in, right now, this is this is Jonathan Aronoff. Jonathan oh, is. I know you won't believe this. It's a stretch, but uh, Jonathan is actually Kenny's twin brother. I bet you can't tell. No. <laughs> Yeah. How come you never mix them up? <laughs> so, Jonathan, Jonathan, where are you calling in from, uh, Jonathan? Yes. I'm actually calling from Stockage, Massachusetts, which uh, is a, I'm about two miles from my mom and my sister in my oh, own house. Come on. I didn't know this. This is awesome. Yeah. Whoever's oh. tuning in to see this, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we got to ask the, we got to ask the, 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 the uh, Ellie, we have to ask you. We have to ask you. What was it like having these two, the, I, I don't even want to say these fine young gentlemen. What were they like growing up together? Tell us, please. And well, then, like and then you can tell the truth. Puppies in the family, when they were the first born, and I couldn't keep them in tow, so I just let them grow up by themselves. Oh, fantastic. What, what were they in the sports? Did they, were they in the sports and music and things like that? Yeah. Well, when they first started school, I think they thought 
all they had to major in was sports, music, and girls. Exactly. <laughs> they did that for a number of years until they finally figured out a mark counted in high school, and they became honor students. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And and so, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about what you do over there in, in, in Stockton, in Massachusetts, because I, I think people will be freaked out, especially the three letters that come after your name. Okay. So when I left uh, Stockbridge, I ended up becoming a clinical psychologist. And then um, I came back to the same town that I was born in, basically, and worked in a hospital and then became a psychoanalyst on top of all that. But while I was doing all that, I realized I was coaching high school soccer. I got my fitness certification. I ended up being a fitness trainer at Canyon Ranch Health Spa. And I started realizing, and I was playing semi-pro soccer, and I realized that I had uh, this bifurcated identity. So mm -hmm. I decided to stop the psychoanalysis and really integrate my psychology and my sports side of my brain and really became a sort of a, what you would call a personal life coach. Right. But with all the credentials yeah. after my name. Fantastic. Which includes PhD. And that's what I do now. Right. Wow. That is fantastic. PhD. I got an MA, an MS, a PhD. Wow. Kenny, what happened, so, buddy? Yeah, I did the research. Hey, man, somebody it. has the looks <laughs> and somebody has the brain. <laughs> Nina, Nina, tell us, tell the truth now. I know Ali was, I think she's told really the hardcore truth, but Nina, what was it like having these two, these two gentlemen around all the time? Um, well, uh -oh. the, the, thing, <laughs> the thing about the puppies, probably pretty true. Uh, like um, oversized puppies, you know, that don't know how big they are and what space they take up. And then just like a little sweet kitten. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was actually monkeys is a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Um, monkeys. Yeah. We, we did have. Uh, they were really good about creating games. We had, um, you know, we would play war cards yep. with about eight decks all over the house. <laughs> um, there were there were a lot of days where we went around the house without touching the floor. It was one of our <laughs> games to see how far you could go around the house. So. I got a really good education in hanging on to door jams and stuff. We were, we were all really athletic. I have a lot of scars to prove it. That's what I was thinking that the scars. That's what probably showed up the, mo the most and so on. Kenny, what it's like to see, you know, to see the family like this. Well, this is, I, you know. before I say that, I want to say something. My sister is also a doctor oh. um, in, in sociology. Nina, maybe explain, because uh, sometimes the, there's a lot of attention on the, 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 the freaky twins here. But Nina has actually uh, done extremely well. She's a professor in Boston. Uh, and at least she tells me she is. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I came to my office once. I borrowed it from a friend. <laughs> she, uh, actually, I saw, I, I started my documentary and, and I, I, either she rented the office to fake yeah. me out, but it yeah. looked like it was her office. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Nina, say what, I, I want to give her a little I credit. Say, um, I want to say something. They, they, um, the sort of the athletic musical arts mental thing is is uh we all have that we all have that kind of uh spiritual development athletic development brain development thing going on so good parents i was a uh, i was uh, riding a bike for a living before i got my first masters and um and still ride a bike um and uh, so, yeah, I have a master's and a doctorate in social work, uh, clinical social worker, which means I do therapy and um, teach. That is amazing. That is absolutely. So, I mean, Ellie, you must be some proud. Like, I mean, I mean, well, two, at least two out of three. There's no doubt about that. We know that part, right? I'm trying to figure on one kid. Think the education side, and then this other guy shows up, just wants to take over the world as a rock star. Noise you wouldn't believe every day. We had a complete set of drums and a complete set of timpani. classical timpani. He studied... Kenny was a classical timpanist and played with the uh, Boston M Music Center Orchestra and then decided he wanted to be a Beatle. But I let them <laughs> those drums in my living room. Oh, so you are responsible for all of the joy that we get no, from this no, guy. Nothing to do with him. 
<laughs> We're missing something. They had a great father. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was killer. Oh, that's very nice to say. Yeah, that's very nice to say. Well, listen, I hope you will you guys stick around for a little bit. I hope you'll just sit around and watch the show. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know that, Kate. I was looking at these like, who's no, here? Thank we, you for having us on. We gave oh. up everything else for this. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's hard to get free tickets to anything from these guys. You know, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> So please stick around. We'd love to. We'd love to come back though and finish. I, if you can, if you can't, it's okay. But please stick around. So and same with yourself, Jonathan. Please stick around. We're gonna. Uh, we're gonna jump here a little bit. Kenny, how cool? Listen, buddy. Thank yeah. you for here. that. Is cool. That, that is, is cool. cool. I I didn't expect them to all jump on, and that's uh, there's an example of where, uh, you know, going into a an internet, the Zoom, or in this no. case, Streamyard. Well, you can actually bring people together. Our whole family got together right there, probably the first time ever, uh, virtually like this. Oh, that is so. I I'm I feel blessed and honored to be part of that. That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna jump around. I'm just gonna go. I don't have any. I just got to go right into the studio. I'm gonna go, yeah. Sarah. Sarah, I'm gonna bring Sarah in. There is Sarah right there. Oh, How's Sarah! There? I what? know Sarah. She's an amazing drummer. That that girl. Not only is an amazing drummer, but she's a, a, a model person, decent, loving, wow. hardworking. Uh, the credentials go on and on, dependable, straight up, bad mofo, killer <laughs> drummer, plays with great feel, disciplined. She's probably 20 uh, black belts. Now, what, how many black belts now? Fourth degree black belt now. Fourth. I just got three <sighs> She's uh she's uh it doesn't get better than that. She's a an um, the one of the greatest human beings on the planet. Oh my Sarah, how are you going oh, I bet you got to live up to that. But that is very kind. There's a, throw out your question to Kenny and thanks for joining us on the show. We so appreciate you having you here. You go ahead and speak to Kenny. Well, well, thank you guys for doing this. I really enjoy when you guys have these kind of like meet and greet live things. I watch every mm -hmm. single one. Uh, my question to you Kenny is you're an inspiration to so many, myself included. Who inspires you? Why? Wow. Well, I'm inspired by so many people because everybody's different. You know what I mean? I listen to everybody. And, and, uh, but right now I'm like, I've been doing some reading. So I'm inspired by, uh, this guy, Steve, uh, Keith Ferrazzi, who's one of the greatest marketing networking guys in the world. I'm reading his sixth book, uh, you know, um, uh, it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, I've been reading Winston Churchill book. I, I just can't believe uh, how incredible that man was. He almost singly, single handedly won World War Two and kept the Nazis out of England uh, until the U.S. got involved. But uh, there's so many mentors I'm around that uh, it's it's hard to list them all. It's just it's, I, I but I listen. If you listen, uh, if you're constantly listening, you're going to hear from different people magical gems that you know will 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 inspire you and and i want to add something when you hear something that somebody's that somebody says to you and you really dig it and it blows your mind it's because it already exists inside you it's actually a reverse compliment if you see somebody you go god that person's amazing they're so intelligent i get what they're saying you already have those qualities in you otherwise you wouldn't recognize it so Wow, that's fantastic. And hey, Sarah, let me throw something at you. Why, why does Kenny inspire you so much? Kenny inspires me because his energy. I want to just take his energy and bottle it up and store it. He's, 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 Love. Okay. He's such an amazing player. I've gotten to work with Kenny at the Connecticut Drum Show. Uh, I've gotten to hang out with him several times. He's just yeah. a fun hang. Just a fun hang, and he has pours out so much information about drumming that I've taken and has helped me a ton. Oh, that's Good. a great compliment. That's a great Good. compliment. Well, listen, thank you for joining us. And we're not rushing. We just, that's... we, we're going to try to get to, but thank you for tuning in. And thank you for the kind compliment you gave us by saying you, you tune in as much as you can. I know we're going to try to bring more uh, Kenny Aaron off to you. So, uh, but thanks for yeah. doing that. And we appreciate you. Appreciate that. See you, Kenny. See you, baby. Bye. Bye. Oh, that is awesome. Gosh, she's a cool person. She's really a great, is. great musician, she's... is she? Great yes, musician. She plays with a lot of feel. She's great. And her family is great. A killer family. Right. It's like, the, like the acorn didn't fall too far from the tree. I mean, they're all beautiful people.
that's a kind compliment. Yeah. And hey, like I said, if you can tell, if you can go through your life and people end up, that's what they know you as, not yeah. much even as a musician, but as a kind person. Yeah. Hey, you've won. You've won. Yeah. We'll jump to, uh, here's a guy, Mike, Mike Matheson. Did I say that right? Mike Matheson. How are you? I see Mike sure. on, the, on the internet all the time. How you doing, Mike? Hey, Kenny. Nice. I can't believe I'm talking to you. It's, I get it's a, a lot. Of, I get a lot of these from you. The thumbs up, the blue thumbs up. That's right. That's I right. love that. Thank uh, you. Couple of quick things. Uh, yep. My mom is also 94, wow. so she's in Peoria, Illinois. I'm in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, I, play a Thomas set. Yep, just like you. Uh, nice Thomas set. I got a question for you. Yeah. Why do you put the smaller Tom Tom to the right and your larger one to the left? Okay, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. So when I got okay. with the John Mellencamp band, he wanted me to have like a Ringo Starr, a Charlie Watts setup. One rack tom, one floor tom. And so I, I, I had a huge kit with like a, nine tom toms. <laughs> but but yeah. he wanted that, that visual look. And John was very into the visuals. So anyway, I, I I was sort of like, wow, that, that, that kind of sucks. So I put a, a 18 inch floor tom in in back of the 16 inch floor tom but tucked it in so john couldn't see it so so i'd have more room to do fills and so um the engineer who's doing sound for us and and when we were opening up for the kinks uh in the usa said dude you know your floor toms are really low and kind of thuddy do you have any higher toms so i can hear more you know, more tonality because i can hear higher pitches and I went, ah, yeah, but John only wants one rack tom. So I said, you know what? Tell John his vocals will sound better if I have another tom tom up there. <laughs> and that, I was just, well, whatever the guy said, John said it was okay. Now, you remember, I was playing Jack and Diana. I needed four toms. So, so what I decided was I, I was so used to playing that, that basic four-piece kit I didn't want to put the 10 inch tom there and I didn't hit it that often. So I put it over to my right. So I just put it over there and I, uh, and I, and then it became my thing. And back yeah. then, back then I had them on snare stands and I had a 24 inch kick drum. So the toms were way far apart, you know, but I wasn't playing, you know, Neil Pertfield. So it was, <laughs> it was, it was easy to do it. And think about it, if your right hand goes to the right, hits the 10 inch and then your left hand hits the 12 inch. Then the right hand goes down to the 16 inch or the 14 inch floor tom. It's baba doom. So it kind of became my thing. Cool. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. One other thing, your book. Holy moly, I read it I don't know how many times and I've got it highlighted yeah. and it's going to be Kenny's important stuff. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for that. I am about to start the audio version of that, my book and it'll be out later this year, I believe. Uh, cool. the, a, a paperback version is coming out, and I I wrote another book two years ago that I've start. I'm going back to kind of revisit. Uh, it's more of this book is my autobiography, Sex, Drums, Rock and Roll. The new book is is how and why I became what I became. Yeah, it's a it's a great book, great read. Thank you, great, Thank you. great drummer. Thank so you. I really appreciate it. Thank really you. appreciate it. There's thumbs up. Thank you. Bro. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Enjoy those Thank and the Tammy. You got the Tammy kit. Thanks. Thanks for Thank joining you. us. Thank we you, bro. It. Hey, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a common question, by the way. But it never, I, you know, I've heard, I've heard, and I've actually read about it a couple times. Yeah. About why that Tom sets? It's still a super unique story, and it's still a super unique thing that people don't see very often from anybody yeah. else. You know, it's part of your sound. Yeah. Really, yeah. You know? Well, especially when I go, blah, 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 you know, it's like, yeah. whoa, how do you do that? You know. Yeah, the sound of where it goes higher, yeah. lower, about yeah, yeah. that like that. Fantastic. Okay, we got somebody here. Oh, look at this now. I, any listen, anytime you got a name like Luigi, there's something cool about to happen. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm sorry if I'm doing I don't know even know why I just yeah. I'm sorry. Oh Luigi. man, I'll try I'll, I'll try to live to live up to that expectation of something cool happening. Hey, Luigi, <laughs> how are you, my friend? How oh are man, you? Um, I'm super excited to see you guys to to, to be able to talk with you, Kenny. Uh, it's fantastic. Thanks for the uh, well. Thanks Where for doing this. Thank you. Where are you? Where are you? I'm in Me I'm in Mexico City. Yeah. All right. We're okay, going. that that automatically sets up for coolness. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, That's man, cool. Dude. 
Oh, Luigi, awesome. that's fantastic. Thank well, thank you for tuning in from from uh, from Mexico City. I've been all around. I know Kenny's traveled quite a bit as well. I've been yeah. to every little every little spot in in Mexico except uh, Mexico City. I've Whoa. every little dot like where Extapa, Siwatanejo, all, nice. all this. And nice. uh, but never been to Mexico City. Anyway, we'll go there another time. All Have right, you, thank you. You're more than welcome. You. I'll take care of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, Kenny Ale, uh, thank you so much for 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 listening. Yeah. Uh, my, my question is um, about how do you tackle a very difficult situation from my end? Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, "Bad Out of Hell" two. That yeah. session for I would do anything for love in particular. Uh, it's a legacy album, and yeah. you, you're 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 uh, you're dealing with uh, Gene Steinman and 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 yeah, Meatloaf, yeah. and that's a, that's going to be. I mean, like everything you've done. For for the books, it's it's, it's yeah. going to be historic. But how does your your approach or your musicianship, your energy come into play to writing those parts to to for such a legacy time? Because what I was thinking is, uh, you got the songs; they're very operatic. Yes, and how do you, right. how exactly? How did you come up with the drum parts, or where did they come from to to to, to record them like like such in a grandiose way you did? Well, that, that's a man. You picked a, the right uh, right song. That's an iconic song. It's not your typical radio three and a half minute song. I mean, that song ended up being ten and a half minutes, and yeah, and we recorded eight and a half of it in L.A. And a year later, they fly fly me to New York and record more songs for the album. And they said, and and we're going to add a two minute intro to "I'll Do Anything for Love," but I won't do that. And I went. Are you guys crazy? Nobody's going to play it. <laughs> Nobody will play that on the radio. And when that song came out, even when they shortened it to seven and a half minutes, it was number one in 20 countries. In one week, I was like, you know what I said? If you have any question about if a song's going to make it or not, if I say it isn't, it will be a hit. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I mean, so anyway... Jim Steinman is a genius, so he'd write these very long, composed pieces. This wasn't the type of thing where you walk in and record it in one day. We'd spend a yeah. week on it, maybe come back to it. So what? And I had page after page. I write everything out, and I, tr I and what it was was Jim trusted me, and I, uh, I would just come up with ideas, and he'd say yes, no, yes, no, and then what got difficult was he'd say. Hey, Kenny, this is like on Thursday. He'd go, do you remember what you did on Monday in this section? And you know what I used to do? I'd write, if, he, if I write a part out and he changed his mind, I'd put a line through it and date it and then put the next, the next version above it because I knew he was going to come back. And I had all my notes there. It was the craziest way to record. And Jim was the type of guy who wanted to try things over and over. Try that, try that, try that. And oh. most, a lot of music on the radios, you have an intro, you have a verse, you have a pre-chorus and a chorus. An intro, a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus. With this song... It was the A section, the B section, the C section, the D section, the E, the F, maybe A again, kind of. And then then it was it was like it just went on, nothing repeated. But somehow it sounded like it made sense, right? Yeah. It's really crazy writing. So yeah, I had to I had to take notes and you there's no way I could memorize all of that because he kept changing his mind every day and i just keep rewriting and eventually we got the parts oh that's that's just amazing it blows my mind because also they have so many different tempos as well and so many yes. sections yes so dealing with that yeah go ahead sorry i th i think that what jim liked about me because i had such a heavy orchestral training I was used to movements and, you know, uh -huh. Mahler, Mahler symphonies, uh, a Stravinsky, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of more of the complex uh, symphonies where it would go Wagner, uh, a Dvorak with a sections or a Debussy where it just goes on and on and on. And I, I had the background of understanding, you know, long through composed music. And I also had the ability oh. to read and write. Jim Steinman 
kind of knew that and he liked me because he could use me to work his ideas out. You see, I made it easier for him to be a, a songwriter and a producer because I could give him the feedback very quickly and not slow him down. My job is to let the producer be creative. So if I'm moving fast and I can accommodate the, the creative genius of Jim Steinman, he loves that because I'm letting him be the artist that he is. And that's my job to allow him to be as creative. And that's what helped make, you know, that song so iconic. I mean, he could be, he could, maybe if I slowed him down, it wouldn't uh, have ever become what it was, you know? Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. And that's truly inspiring because as, as drummers, it puts us on a different level where we're helping other artists uh, yes. express themselves creatively. And uh, well, it gives, uh, well, sets our, uh, the tone for our, our name as well yeah. if, you, if you will yeah oh, that was good. amazing thank you great question you. Luigi. and, and oh, Kenny, you, you, know, Kenny, you, you you this is your whole career i mean you talk about that all the time you were there to serve the song so you serve oh, the yeah. songwriter you serve you serve the producer you serve the band you serve the audience i mean that's yeah that, that is your job and 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 there's a new term that i've been uh, reading about from this great book by keith ferrazzi it's called co-elevation and co-elevation is where you are expected to do your job but you're aware of helping everybody around you do a great job yeah. so that all of you together can do something that you can't do by yourself right you have to you to co-elevate means you really trying hard to work with everybody and you want them to do great and you encourage them to do great and ultimately that makes the session or the recording brilliant Co-elevation. Fantastic. Yeah. Luigi, Co I hope thank that you've got a lot of that. I just learned so much myself. But Luigi, thank you for yeah. calling in from Mexico City. Thank yeah, you, guys. Awesome. Kenny, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for the inspiration awesome. through the years. you welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Stay, safe, yeah. right. stay safe down there. That's yeah. fantastic. Hey, you know what? And I, and I love the fact that you rounded it, that out. I love that term, by the way. We got to talk about that. Yeah, on great co-elevation. Co -elevation. I mean, to push, help each other, lift each other up. And man. Yeah, that's... it's kind of, you know, Peter, it's kind of like um, I need you for me to do a great job. It's that yeah. kind of thing. I right. need that's you right. for us to have a great product. Yeah. I need you. It's yeah. not just about me. It's I need you so that I do great. I I think that's See, it's bad, amazing. Hey, that's not it works for music. That works for the world. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I started thinking about it because you know, you know, it's like you know, yeah, you know, try to convince people. But I started realizing, making records, all these musicians I've worked with all over the years, most of us are like so grateful to be in a recording session yeah. that that attitude is there. I, it, it, I, it's not about me. I need to be working tight with the bass player so that we sound good and the rhythm guitar player and the, the, the you know, the, the keyboard player. I need to be with them. Otherwise, we sound out of sync. So yeah. then I sound bad. So yeah, everyone does. Yeah, and, everyone. So everybody is trying to listen and elevate the room co-elevation i love it well, great? We, yeah we're gonna dig into that that's, yeah. that's a cool subject matter okay let's jump to we got john michael cordez did i say that right john michael yeah you sure did hey guys good afternoon how are you how are you buddy where, where are you calling in from uh san diego good old sunny san diego fantastic well welcome to the show and thanks for hanging out and and you're on with kenny Aronoff. cool thanks so much kenny i just want to say dude you were such an inspiration i have Thank my you. Of sex oh yeah here um so my question for you kenny is uh when i picked this book up a couple of years ago uh this is this is so crazy i can't believe i'm talking to you right now um uh, that uh th your story inspired me to want to be a full-time drummer and a full-time musician wow so, um wow. i currently right now like was with the you know in a band it's not, yeah for a while it's not really breaking so i've been trying to rent my talent out to other people to make a living that way and just sure. i i don't want to work a job that i hate for the rest of my life i i, I want to yeah. want to play drums and that's what i want to do because that's the only thing that really makes me happy and everybody always tells me oh if you want to make a living at being a musician you have to teach 
but I'm really like, I'm not a good teacher. So I was wondering, what would you tell somebody like myself who is an aspiring musician, who's not a great teacher, and in a post-COVID world where, you know, live concerts aren't really a thing right now, what would you tell somebody like me who wants to get out there and wants to make a full-time living doing this and break into the business? Well, that's like, that's a heavy question, dude, because we are, we are at the mercy of this pandemic. And uh, like I was supposed to do a world tour with Joe Satriani and a lot of shows with John Fogarty and a band I'm in called Supersonic Blues Machine, which features Billy Gibbons. And all of that got postponed and then canceled uh, because of the situation. So we are all at the mercy of a unique situation. But eventually eventually it'll sort itself out, you know, and we'll be, we'll be okay. It's just going to take a while. Right. It's, an, it's a new experience that we've never experienced in our lifetime, but it's happened before, just not in our lifetime. So what I would suggest, you know, just keep playing music as much as possible. Do what you have to do. I come to my studio every day, every day, because this, like you can identify, this is what makes me happy. Practicing of playing music. Uh, I'm fortunate I have a recording career, so I record a lot of records all the time. My, my rec recording thing has gone up, and you know, you can see I have a studio, so th that's great. Uh, I do miss playing live, that's absolutely, I, I miss it. We did, there's no, sh there's nothing we can do about that. So just keep practicing and keep playing the records, keep playing the music. If you have a place to practice and you can bring somebody in and play and keep social distancing, if you got a trio, you know, keep everybody at a distance, uh, just to have that engagement. Uh, as far as the live thing, uh, we're at the mercy of what, um, you know, venues decide to do. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, it's just, it's, everyone's trying to figure it out. So my, I can't solve that problem. But I will tell you, I can say for me that I stay very busy. I create things and always stay busy and go it's very important that you go after the things that make you feel love and joy in your heart which is playing the drums so you do that every single day because here's the heavy part not only are you making yourself happy but the ripple effect of your joy and love in your heart it, it spills off on the people around you now you know yeah. it's it, uh, uh i don't know if you have a girlfriend or what but you know uh, in my situation i was i've uh, you know, I'm my wife, you know, is not used to me being around. I've been gone the whole time. And mm -hmm. so so there's a lot of adjustment. But the, the happier you can be, the more that spills off into the people around you. And if you have a girlfriend, you know, boyfriend or married or whatever, uh, this is a, this is important for your your close relationships with people. So, yeah. you know, just just. There's no answer for the live thing, but play the drums as much as you possibly can. A anything that makes you happy. Uh, I, I talk about this when I speak. It's very important for people to live by their purpose. If your purpose is to be a drummer, then you do anything you can in your life to do that because that's, that's what you're here to do. And when you do that, you will be unstoppable. You'll be authentic. You'll be you. You'll be undeniable. You will get the most value out of your life. So you're on the right track by following your heart. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Wow. Jeez, Kay, that was fantastic. And, and you know, to that point, uh, Michael, I can just tell you, you know, you're John Michael and so the idea of doing things that just do not fill your soul, I'll tell yeah. you. Now, I'll just just a one liner from my, me with this hair and all this kind of stuff. I used to be an accountant at one time. Can you imagine that? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> like I used to be an accountant at one time. And, yeah. But my, and I loved helping people, but I, it, I didn't feel my soul. So Kenny just said it best. If that fills your soul and you, you can't think of nothing else, you're so on the right track. And, and to Ken's point, you know, we're at the mercy of what's happening in the world. So, uh, but you're definitely on the right track. So Kenny, man, that was, I loved it, man. Unstoppable. I love that phrase too. Hey, you. Hey, and, and John Michael, stay yes. with your brother, stay with it. And Thank you. we're cheering for you. Okay. Thank we're cheering you. Yeah. For Thanks, Thanks so much. guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. That was great. Ah, that was great advice, man. Like, uh, that was, hey, that's part of your speaking thing. I, I, could, I, I could <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, 
<laughs> but I'm I'm only speaking about what I believe in. So it's like I, I refuse to get up there and speak unless it's something that it's truly me and I believe in. Otherwise, it won't be authentic. It won't come off sincere. And and I I, I don't I don't I don't you know if I see someone speak and it's just an act, I don't buy it. I don't yeah. care how good they I don't care how good they speak. Yeah. I want the truth. I want you. I want your soul and your passion. Hey, that's about that's a music too. You know, you can tell yeah. when someone's dialing it in. They're yeah, absolutely. Music, when someone's dialing in and when they really care about it, you can feel yeah. it. It's yeah. tangible. It's tangible. Okay, yeah. we're gonna jump to Connecticut. I think we're going to Connecticut here. Let's see yeah. if I got hey Duncan, how are you? Hey, what's going on? Good how to see you, my friend. You're in Connecticut. I, well, you put it in the in the title there, so that's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm in the middle of the woods here. We had Mexico City. I'm in the Connecticut woods here. Uh, where, hey, where in Connecticut are you? So I'm in a place called Oxford, Connecticut. It's uh, it's really in the middle of the woods. Okay, what's the closest city? It's it's close to Wallingford. I saw you recently there with the experience Hendrix. Yeah. So at, you were exactly. at the there with with Satriani. So close to New Haven, close to Hartford. Yeah. You know, yep. Connecticut's not a huge huge city here. No, I know that. I know that. So, That's fantastic. So listen to your talk. I, Oh, I'm losing you. You're so awesome. I hope you're charging enough for your public speaking gigs. <laughs> well, I'm, my my agent takes care of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell him to charge more because of the whole co-elevation thing. You notice everybody leaving here is grinning from ear to ear. So that's uh, awesome, I awesome. already feel great. Thank you. you. Thank you. Awesome. For that. Thank you. So, um, my question for you is that, you know, you are one of the greatest in the world and you have worked with some of the greatest from Jim Steinman, you know, as a yeah. producer and meatloaf and, and it, the list goes on. My question is, have you noticed through the years from working with all these people who have made it to the top of the heap, so to speak, have you noticed any commonalities, any traits that everybody seems to share that you feel like that might be the thing that propelled them up there? To superstardom or just to be the best at what they do. Yeah. Including yourself. I'd say the common trait is the thing that I talk about when I speak. It's called RPS. And that is the repetition of any skill is the preparation for success. These people, all of them, just have put in gazillions of hours. Now, they, they're obsessed by what they do. Uh, they don't want to do anything else. And I mean, I was kind of, by the time I graduated high school, the next day, I was practicing eight hours a day, seven days a week. Now, some of that was fear-based because I was going to school to study classical music because there was no school of rock back then, but out of fear for being behind, and I was behind. But mm -hmm. I also loved what I was doing. And so... I was a, I was I wanted to catch up, but the more I did it, the better I got, and the more joy I got, and the more technique I got, the more I could express myself and be creative, and it becomes addictive. So you know when you're working with a guy like Sting, or you're working with Paul McCartney, or I'm working with Tony Iommi from Sabbath, or I'm working with uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Lady Gaga, or I'm working with uh, Johnny Cash or Ray Charles, all of them, like you said. Uh, ever since they were very, very little, that's all they wanted to do. And they put in the hours. And if somebody, no, see, nobody is born successful. And if success doesn't fall from the sky. It doesn't land in your lap. And in the people who are expecting it to, to become, expecting to be successful for, with no work, they're going to lose out because people like me are going to come and just take what they're, what they're waiting for. Not purposefully, but you, it, the, so the common trait is these people work their butts off, but they right. love what, but they love what they do. So that fueled them. That's why the, the b before I was talking to somebody about you know you've got to follow your heart because so working hard you're gonna get to a point where it's gonna suck. It's it's not fun. You get down. But if you're doing what you love to do, that's the fuel. That's the juice. That's the the thing that will help you, you know, persevere through the tough times. Does that make sense? That makes absolute sense. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually, you know, I, I'm your LinkedIn friend, and you see me in a suit and tie. I don't know if you recognize I, me. I, but... thought, I recognize your name. Yeah. That's what I was going. I know that guy. 
So I'm, I'm actually, I'm a businessman by day. It was interesting what Peter said, but I, I have a metal band, an uh, original metal band. We won the mm. uh, Connecticut Music Awards three years in a row. Yeah, yeah. And people have asked, it's absolutely, I just worked, 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 and worked, and I, I loved it. I was very passionate about it, and that's absolutely makes yeah. sense what you're saying. So thank yeah. you for sharing that. It's awesome. Well, thank you for acknowledging it. That's great. That's fantastic. So, Duncan, you follow uh, Kenny on LinkedIn? Yes, you do. Yeah, we, okay. we've chatted back and forth a couple of times, yes. Okay, that's fantastic. You know, because yeah. that's an interesting platform for Kenny and, and anyone in that kind of world, you know, in yeah. the entertainment business. Yeah. And, and uh, But I think uh, just what you mentioned, I mean, we forget that people have more, that they're more than what they do for a living. They're, they're people right. more than what they do yeah. for so when people say, for example, what do you do? When they ask me, I'm always thinking, what, for when? Like for money? You mean, oh, me, you mean for money, what do I do? Or what do we do for fun? <laughs> when people say, what yeah. do you do? What? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things I do. You know? I, I might be able to use an accountant here too, actually. So that's Whoa, good. <laughs> there we go. Come on, come don't, on. Don't, don't even it's think about it. Say eight, eight hours. I remember when I was a kid, I had read this thing. Michael Shaker, that was the number he used. He said, I, yeah. I practice eight hours a day. And I did that religiously on the yeah. guitar. And I, I mean, I, I won the award, so I guess I got okay with it. Yeah, there you and, go. And um, eight hours was the magic number. I wouldn't quit until I was eight hours into it. Today. Yeah, that was my magic number, too. But wow. that's wow, it. That's you, do, you were doing exactly what I talked about, RPS. Repetition yeah. of any skill is the preparation for success. Very good. Awesome. Well, you're, you're awesome. such an inspiration. Your energy thank is you. just contagious. So thank, thank you for that. Thank awesome, you for dude. having me on here. Hey, Thanks. Take care. Good luck, Peter. All right, Thank you. Too, you. Man. Take it easy. Good see to you, see buddy. you, man. Good right. to see you. That is awesome. Hey, and yeah. I love the fact that he connects with you on LinkedIn because, again, you know, we've talked about this before. A lot yeah. of people think that uh, – I don't know what they think of LinkedIn, but certainly when LinkedIn started, it was kind of a place where people in business would put up their resumes. But yeah. it's really a professional site, uh, 650 million users around the world. I mean, listen, I just saw a post literally on LinkedIn. Now, I don't know if it was her doing it, but it was under the account of Jennifer Lopez. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's on yeah. there doing, uh, doing different things. So I know that you share a lot of stuff on there as well. Well, the, I get a different response from the LinkedIn followers then from an Instagram follower and a Twitter follower, they all have their own platforms to attract uh, people for different reasons. You are absolutely correct. And that and that's the point about content as well. The things that you talk about, you might uh, in, on yeah. the, for example, might be talking about your speaking, uh, your your business connections and those kinds of things. And then again, you're on Twitter, you might be just expressing an idea. And then here, you're, you're obviously entertaining and, yeah. and, and engaging with people. So it's awesome. So no, thanks, Duncan. We appreciate that. And he, he's out in the middle of the woods. I envy that actually, you know, it's right now we all need to be a little, we we need a little rest time. There's nothing wrong with that. I get, we're, we're trying to get through all this uh, strange times, Kenny, strange times. Okay, yeah. we got another guest. I don't know where she's calling from, but let's go to Karen Thompson. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Karen, do I I'm know gonna, you? Okay, Kenny. Um, we, K Kathy Johnson and I were roommates back in Bloomington, back Woo! in the uh, like 70s. Oh, okay. my God. Were you a, and, a sorority? Were so, you in a sorority with her? Oh, hell no. <laughs> she was a sorority I, I, girl. I'm a volleyball player. I was. I played on the IU volleyball team for a couple Oh, years. my God. Um, I remember you. I remember yeah. your hair. Your hair was shorter. I remember you exactly. We used to go out. You had you had the greatest attitude, the, the nicest, happiest, <laughs> coolest person, and you still are. I well, remember you. I can't. Well, you know, and one of the the first time I ever met you, you were doing a drum recital at the School of Music, yeah. and I heard you, and it was it was so amazing. And I made you know from that point on, then we became friends, and that was when Spring Winter was going. Yeah, and you and I ended up doing aerobics together, and and I was we telling did? you this story. I, I know you won't remember this, but one day when you and I were doing aerobics, there was an earthquake in Bloomington, Indiana. <laughs> what? And we were the the whole place jumped, and we looked around like, did somebody just drop some weights or something? But it was literally we found out later that day that there had been a minor earthquake, so we were shaking it up in the uh, aerobic studio. Oh my God! In Indiana, an earthquake. I'm in L.A. That's where you have earthquakes. Oh right. God. No. This so, is, this oh, is crazy. Where, are you in Bloomington now? I'm um, no. I actually live in Evergreen, Colorado now. Oh, that's beautiful up there. 
so yeah, it's a really beautiful day today. And uh, I, I just, I tuned in last week and, and had listened to you. And I, and I was really thinking about this a lot because the life of Kenny and how you're, you know, how everything yeah. goes, you, I mean, you really, I was so fired up after listening to you. Um, but it, it's so interesting because you know everybody through this amazing life and career and how your path is taking you. But I have these Kenny moments that you would never have known about because, you know, we don't see each other very yeah. often, obviously. But it's so funny how yeah. every so many years you just, you appear. And it's, and it's funny, like um, when I went to a Joe Cocker concert in Oakland one wow. time, and there you were wow. drumming. Wow. Um, or my husband, bizarre. my husband was just at the Telluride Blues Festival, and there you were, you know, with John with Fogarty. Fogarty drumming. Yeah. And uh, I have a friend that, who used to be in LA. His name is El Jave Gutierrez. And he is a flamenco rock guitarist. But I saw you on his Facebook page because you guys had a mutual friend. It was a young man who was killed by a drunk driver. And oh, he was very wow. promising. And wow. so some, and he, yeah. So, and, and Javi now lives in Denver and plays here. But um, he, it, so we connected more to yeah. you again. It's just been. Um, you, know, you know, it's interesting. I don't believe there's any accidents. I believe that everybody, right. there are no accidents. People meet for a reason. We don't understand why. So seeing you after all these years, it's no accident. Me being on stage. I know exactly. some, it's just no accidents. It's just, it's all meant to be, but, you know, and even funny. I was, when I was driving, listen to this, I was driving to the liquor store today to get a bottle of that eight years in the desert. that you Whoa. About. And that's when I got the email that I was going to get to talk to you today. <laughs> oh my God. Have you tried that, that, that wine? So I just bought it today. You're going to, all right, you got it. It's unbelievable. It's ridiculous. So, do it's you know the story behind why they called it that? No, no. Because or Oren Swift, he sold his company to Prisoner Wine, so he had to wait eight Prisoner. years until he could. Yes, he had to wait eight years before he could make his wine again. So he called it Eight Years in the Desert. So this is his recreation of the original Prisoner Wine, and that's why it's so good. All right, so everybody, Prisoner <laughs> Wine is exceptional. <laughs> this is even better. You're yes. going to flip. I mean, <laughs> okay, you, when I was drinking that, you know, everybody, I did this wine. Uh, I get a, a Zoom wine tasting with this winery and they sent me in and it sounded like I was BSing. But when I opened it up and drank it, I went, what the, f you know, I mean, I could not just, they said, what do you think? And and you heard what I said. It was the perfect wine. But, you know. We we we've been we've been we've been talking about this, Karen. Just so you know, Kenny and I we we've, we've been talking about this. We said we gotta we gotta do a show where we're, uh, we're yeah drinks or trying some wine or and so you so gotta come on. We gotta get out. you on it. There, you <laughs> I'm so excited. I okay. Love, I mean, I you got it. You have to send me a message. What platform okay. do you follow me on? What do you follow on me on Facebook? Okay, send me I can a message. Instagram as well, but yeah, I will send me a message. Uh, and and tell me what you think of that wine, and Peter, okay. we should do. We were th talking about maybe we'll have a a yeah. wine thing, and you yeah. can be part of it. We'll bring people on, and uh, yes, Great it, idea. you know, just 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 everybody can have the same bottle and yeah. compare. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Because yeah. everybody everybody's going to have a different opinion. I mean, you're, you're going to flip though. I mean, but. Oh, when I can't I, wait to try I, it. I, I, I've never tried it before. I, I'm looking it's forward. A, it, I have to say, it's 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 a little pricey. Uh, when I when I when I looked at it, I went to order it yesterday, <laughs> and I went, "Oh, well, that's it should call, it should taste good." <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was on sale actually, even so Ooh. I got it for maybe a few dollars off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's still up there. Still out there. Hey, I know. Karen, yeah. I just wanted to quickly yeah. ask you, like you said last week you tuned in and you watched And when you said last week, was that the July show, July 4th? Did you the watch? The 4th of July show, yeah. Okay, yeah. great, great. Yeah. And I'm just curious, if you yeah. don't mind sharing with us, you said, ah, I, I watched that and I just felt I was so uh, excited and pumped. And uh, what, what, uh, what did you get from that? I'm just curious because we did that so impromptu and and it's really, it's really uh, uh, nice to hear that you got something out of it. It was, it, like Kenny said, there's really no accidents. I literally had just taken a little nap and I sat up and all of a sudden it said, Kenny is live on Facebook. I'm like, what? I was, am I dreaming? So I clicked <laughs> over and there you were. Mm. And I thought it just flooded me back with all these memories of these, you know, times and how many times I went and saw John and yeah. you were playing with them. And oh my gosh, it was just, 
you know, and, and just the history though, because yeah, you're a super cool guy and you're an amazing drummer, but like how you talked about your dad and, and how, you know, the history of everything. I just, because my dad was my best friend and yeah. I just, the family part and then having your sister and your mom and your brother today, yeah. it just, it so solidifies you as that solid, you know, human being that you are you. and the motivational part, because so what I was going to say, or my question was, you know, we both went to Indiana university yeah. and I, I went to the school of education and I have been teaching for almost 40 years. Wow. So I teach physical education to middle schoolers and I've still loved it. And, and the motivation and the passion. So, I, and I had teachers that really, really inspired me. So I did, was thinking, I love the school of music, David Baker. I took his class when I was there, but I was wondering if there were people that really did inspire you there too, that kind of helped you. Cause KJ, she told me today that she tried to talk you out of going to join John's band. Cause she thought, why would he go sell out to a rock band when he's such a good jazz drummer? So, <laughs> so I'm guessing that somebody must have inspired you. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons why. Well, well, but the reason why I went to rock and roll was because, you know, when I was 10 years old, I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show and it changed my life. And so I was oh. just, and, and yeah. when it was time to go to college, I, there was no school of rock back then. So I studied, I yeah. uh, went to Indi University of Massachusetts, but I, I, it's a long story, but I got to Indiana the following year and spent four years there because that was the number one school of music. Yeah. And I wanted to be at the best school and get the best training. Yeah. And that guy, George Gaber, uh, was, uh, Gaber. He, he, yeah, you remember his name? He's famous. Uh, he... And for people listening, this was a school that was very difficult to get into in the music school, but yeah. it was very difficult to stay in. It was like being in the Marine Corps. You had to prove yourself over and over yeah. again. And my teacher, when I walked in the first lesson, I didn't have a pencil and eraser. He gave me an F and threw me out of the room. And I never, <laughs> I have never showed up at a rehearsal without a piece of paper and a pencil again. So, but... But the last, I, I worked my way from the bottom to the top, and I won a concerto competition. I, I had learned a, a, a violin concerto on marimba. It was one of the four pieces I had to perform in my senior recital. I spent a year on it, 365 yeah. days, two, two hours a day. And my teacher said, I want you to audition for a concerto competition. Well, I won, and so I performed at the Musical Arts Center, the Opera Hall. It's as big as the New York Met, right? It's huge. And yes, I was a guest yes. soloist. And so my point is, I be, I worked my way to the top at the number one school of music, get into the Jerusalem Symphony Orchestra. I'd worked with Leonard Bernstein and Sergio Zauer and Aaron Copeland at Tanglewood. Spent four years auditioning cons every year to get in. I finally got in. And I turned it down to play rock and roll because... <laughs> <laughs> and the and the and the and the, the lesson there is I followed my heart and not yeah. my brain. My brain said you should go to Jerusalem. What an honor. You finally uh, uh, you know, you reached the goal that you wanted. You studied and got but when I got to Bloomington, you knew Stream Winner. That was a band that I was in yeah. li living in a house trying to make it and we were trying to get the record deal and tour all over the world, make records like the Beatles. It didn't happen. You were always such as you were always there you were such a fan and w yeah when i got into john mellencamp band or johnny cougar back then a lot of people were yeah. thinking what are you doing but i that was the beatles for me and i there was a part yeah. of me and i obviously i made the right decision <laughs> uh yeah i think so absolutely absolutely no that's a, that's a great uh, great flashback for for people that don't know like you yeah. said you didn't just wake up and uh you know, oh, there's a guy named John Cougar needs you to play in a band, and then it happened. It doesn't happen like that. No, so no. It's good to be reminded uh, of the of of where it comes from. So, Karen, we will call you again yes. when we get the wine ready. <laughs> Karen, oh. reach out to Sounds me. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Reach out to me, and everybody. Kudos to Karen. She was always. I never saw her not smiling. I never saw her not have a positive attitude. That if if I were to start some sort of team, a business, or any athletic team, she'd be the person I'd I'd pick first because she is a team leader. So you want her on your team, you know, wow. really. Well, if you ever do, I want to join your team. Okay. Okay. Well, we've got to we'll let let's start a team. It's a wine team. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. Right. A wine team. Okay. All right. Reach out. To, reach out to me, and we'll come. We'll we'll co elevate. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. figure out fantastic. something we can do. All right. Well, Thanks, Karen. Nice to see you. Awesome. Have a great evening. Yeah. Wow.
I haven't wow. seen her since the seventies. Wow, that, it's amazing that you remember people both. Oh these. well, she she had she was extraordinary. I mean, her and and Sarah. These are two. I mean, I can't believe two people uh, uh, like that on this. Just always positive, you know. I mean, everybody has their down moments, but these people shine. They just got and so you know. I want to be around those kind of people. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. Let's. Uh, we got to tie it up because I. We got to. We got to bring John back in. We got to. We got to. That's exactly where I was going with that. Got to get John back in. I mean, look at this guy. Because <laughs> I, I want to ask John. Can, I'm going to ask John something. So. You know, my brother is a hard worker like me. He's a doctor. He sees people, patients. He's in 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 uh, uh, nursing homes now, dealing with people who have COVID that can't see their families. He's uh, uh, he's in the courtrooms a lot as a, a prime witness to help judges make decisions about people. Uh, you know where they should go. What uh, and anyway, but John sent me pictures recently of this massive garden he built. But you have to understand. It's not just a garden. It's a garden with like a fort, fort Knox around it because he showed me also video of bears. And he said there's bobcat, coyotes, uh, uh, you know, raccoons, deer. That's the big stuff. Uh, I'm leaving something out. So he's built this. I mean, what the heck, John? What'd you build? Explain it. <laughs> well... Speaking of co-elevation, yeah. <laughs> let me just say something about the co-elevation first. My, you know, the greatest basketball player ever, Michael Jordan, yeah. his teammates always said to him, the only reason why we were as successful as we were is because Michael Jordan always brought out the best in us. He yeah, had this, this amazing capacity to create something that's greater than the, than the sum of each player. And so all these guys, Dennis Rodman, you know, Dennis, yeah. Steve Kerr, Pippen, yeah. these guys just played for him. And when he was there, and that's why Phil Jackson didn't get rid of him, and the manager, I can't remember his name, didn't get rid of him because they knew that it wasn't just Michael Jordan. It was what he was doing. He was he was t attaching all the yeah. beads yeah. of the team and making yeah. a necklace. Yeah. It was yeah. unbelievable. So, yes, why? Why did I do Yeah. So I've got basically – I created – you know, it, this is not just this the stone. This is moving literally tons of soil to make sure that I can level yeah. uh, the, the, the the playing field so I can put six six foot by four feet by one foot deep raised garden beds, move that soil up a hill, put it in the beds. I drilled every you know screw into into those six beds. And then I realized I'm, I live in with 10,000, you know, Kenny, where I live, 10,000 acres of conservation yeah. land that backs up against uh, Beartown Mountain. Yeah. And across the street is, is my near mountain. And I've got, I'm fighting off beavers. I'm fighting off the bear. Well, that's about 425-pound black bear. That's what <laughs> yeah. lives right down at the bottom of my hill. Okay? And I've got coyote. And, uh, you know, Suzanne saw a wolf one day. And, you know, and when I hear coyote, it's not like one going whip, you know, you know, you know yelping. It's like yeah. 20 of them. Okay. Yeah. And bobcat. I remember when I well, also got chickens. So I thought, okay, I got these chickens. I'm raising these chickens. And uh, the first time I raised chickens, I remember, I heard, you know, also I heard my chicken outside of my house screaming. I run out there. I'm half dressed with a shovel. And a flashlight, and there's a bobcat with a chicken in its mouth. He had jumped over a six foot wow, fence, wow. grabbed the chicken, and then as he was leaving, because he was so afraid that I was going to get him, he, he left the chicken. But he didn't move more than 15 feet away from the fence, and he didn't wasn't scared of me. Wow! And I told my friends the next day, that bobcat, he wasn't scared of me. He's only like two and a half feet. And they said, listen, buddy, that bobcat could jump on your back, slit your throat write a dissertation before you realize yeah. you're dead. Yeah, of course. So I realized that I'm going to build – okay, so I'm going to build this garden. I'm thinking, all right, I'll get to what motivated me. And I'm going to have chickens. i got to make sure it is Fort Knox. Yeah. So I talked about, you know, four-by-four four beams, posts, yep. every five to eight feet, you know, and we're talking for the gardens, 25 foot by 30 feet. 
That's the space for the six of my six gardens, okay? With stone in between, nice little path. I had to build doors, gates. So because I gotta keep the animals up. And that's yeah. the deer, the bunny rabbits, the little squirrels, the cute things. Now on the other side, attached to that, is where the chickens go. Now I'm talking about nature. I gotta keep up bear, yeah. bears, yeah. I gotta keep up, you know, all sorts of slippery creatures from getting in there. So now the fence is six and a half feet tall, and I've gotta put a, a fence on the ceiling. So now I've got four by fours all mixed in there, and I've gotta make sure they're all straight, narrow. Anyway, it's an amazing project. So now I've got 30 by 25 yeah. attached to 30 by 25. But here's the reason why. People ask me, you ask me, why are you doing this? It started with this whole thing with the COVID. And the COVID virus thing made me realize as I'm watching everyone run like yeah. maniacs in one direction, nah, this is nothing. Everyone's making it up. This is just like blah, 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 blah. And I'm watching these people running like around with like the chicken, chickens with their heads cut off. And the other people who are saying, oh my God, this is the end of the world. Yeah. The world's on fire. We're in trouble. What I thought about was wake up call. We've had pandemics for hundreds of thousands of years and we just yeah. happen to be living. Really well. Right. So exactly. I thought, you know, I feel like I'm halfway between living in, in nature and I'm halfway uh, living with human beings. I help people all day, but I live in the middle of conservation. Though. So I want yeah. to bring the two together. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I'm really a farmer underneath all this education. A farmer, know, farmer John. Farmer John. I think that's farmer it. John. Farmer John. You're Farmer John at night, but then you're Dr. John during the day. You got it. So, Dr. John. Now, Jonathan, you're, you're only, you said you're only two, two miles from Nina and, and, uh, and Ellie. Yeah. So yes. do they? So Nina, are you having the same problems with bears and cougars and all these kind of whatever's in the back of the world? I don't know what you. <laughs> no. Coyotes. And, <laughs> she no. lives in Boston. I live in Boston. My mom is the one that's around with the oh. cougars. Yeah, and but Nina, 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 Nina has I different type of bears. Garden. I did a small garden, and now I'm digging up my yard. But um, yeah, no, I did used to garden out here. I don't know how we didn't have bears then, but. Um, I've done my time with that, and I probably will get back to it eventually. Hey, remember I had a garden forty-five. I had a forty-five foot by thirty-five foot garden in Indiana. I don't know. I, I had one yeah. upstairs too. But, but I did. I didn't have any of this Fort Knox stuff. I, I, I mean, they just took whatever they wanted. <laughs> right. But John, you know, John, I was gonna say, you know, I, you know, because John does a lot of uh, walks and talks and stuff, and I, and I always, I always say to John. What do you got? Give me something. Give me like two minutes of something. I'll give you something. That's a great idea. That's what do I'll you got? I'll give you something. You know, I, want to, I want to go back to that question. You know, when you said, and I'll give you something, what do you do? You know what my answer to that is? What I do is based on everything I've been doing since the day I was born, and that's what I bring into the moment. So what I do is I'm going to tell you what I'm going to give you. What I'm going to give you is that we can't predict when life is going to end. One thing I know for sure, no one gets out of life alive. Life is the most dangerous illness in the world. It always kills us. We end up dying, and no one gets out of life without some form of trauma. So what I want to give you is my concept that I use is flipping the coin. Tail side of the coin is all the grief, the trauma, the stress that we get every day life. The head side of the coin is what we do to be, find a solution to that stress. Yeah. So what I always tell my people that I talk to, my clients, first you gotta embrace the tail side of the coin. So everyone's running around saying, oh, this COVID is no big deal. No, 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 no. You're not looking at the tail side of the coin. There is, a, people are dying. And you can, in your own way, kill off people. So the tail side of the coin is, you gotta deal. But the thing about that is, Give yourself a deep breath, inhale, feel the pain, okay, the tail side of the coin, and then exhale. Flip the coin, and when you flip the coin, do something for yourself to enhance your life. For me, it was the garden project and the chicken project. Mm -hmm. For me, that was flipping the coin. Yeah. You know what? I got, I, 
I eat vegetables, salad every night. Yep. I'm going to have eggs starting in November. If, if I get, if the cougars don't get it, the bears don't get the chickens, <laughs> which I don't think they will. <laughs> and so flipping the coin is, and if they do, I'll start all over again. I've decided that my contribution to my life and to the people who I love is I'm going to grow a garden. Inhale, yes, this COVID virus. I go into a nursing home 45 hours a week. I was only going 15 hours a week, but there are so many people you know, living their last breaths without seeing their loved ones, and I become Dr. John. Then I come home, and I become Farmer John, and that's what I do every day. That's what I got to give you, Kenny. Well, dude, uh, that's that's awesome. I mean, I wish I had room to put a garden, but I'll tell you what, Amazon is so badass. I want you to stick some stuff in a pouch and send it to me. And if those bears get out of control, I got some uh, weapons of mass destruction. I'll come and for a small fee, I'll sit up there all night eating some carrots, waiting for that bear. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's great. Let me tell you that's a good. Let me tell you something about that bear. When that bear <laughs> came walking up, yeah, I saw up it. the hill. I was working on my book. I'm working on a book, okay? Suzanne and I are working on this book. And I said, Suzanne, look out the window. This 400-pound bear's walking. And she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to open the door. I'm going to say hi to it. She said, you can't do that. I said, bears aren't afraid of you. <laughs> the bear looked at me, stopped, went, snorted, and just kept right on going. Yeah. He walked right past the chicken coop and past my gardens. As if to say, yeah, right, buddy. When I'm ready to take those chickens yeah. and those vegetables, I'm just going to lean against those yeah. fence. I don't care if you have four by four. 10 by 10, 100 by 100 posts, I'm knocking them all over. Yeah, of course. That's Humble. What, and what was my advice? Make sure you feed that bear. Feed the bear so he doesn't take your food. Just keep throwing apples out there. Feed the bear. Hey, bear, here you go. <laughs> anyway, all right. Look, well, Kenny, before, we finish up, before we finish up, I had to put this screen back up for yeah. everyone to see. I mean, so this, there you have it. I mean, for people that are fans of yours, I mean, we forget. <laughs> you guys are just, we're just kind of watching this play out. We're watching these family just chat. We're just thinking, but it's a really cool experience for people that follow your career. And then they go, oh, yeah. he's like us. He has a family and a brother and a sister, you know, and mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But I got to tell you something, Kenny. I'm just going to tell you this, and I and I mean this, and I want to put it on the recording here. I I'm so privileged to meet your mom, Ellie. I'm so lucky to have met you. I've heard so much about you. Thank you. Yeah, and you and I just I just loved your the fact that you got these three beautiful people as part of your life. I mean, that must be pretty special, isn't I it? I love the fact that I have these three beautiful, marvelous people. I'm very <laughs> proud of them. Don't tell them, but I'm very, very proud of them. Oh, <laughs> I don't to get big heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll you know what I love both most about them, they're very decent people, and they're very grown up. They've got their act together, and they're comfortable in their own skins, and I don't ever have to worry about them. What do you think of that? Oh, I mean, if that's if there's anything on this planet we should all uh, uh, strive for is leaving a great legacy and leaving great children be right and leaving great children behind on the planet. That is a wonderful legacy for you. Who said I'm going to leave them behind? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You caught me. There you go. Come on, Pete. <laughs> You see what they grew up with too Mike bad. Dropped. Yeah, you just yeah, you just yeah, you just dropped the mic. You just dropped the mic. Well, I so appreciate you guys sticking around for for the end of this. Uh, we're going to wind it up. You can stay in yeah. the back ring if you want to stay with us for a couple seconds. We'll come back to you. Uh, very good we'll, we'll, job we'll, you're doing right yeah, here, this Peter. Is cool. Thank you, very for very good. Us. Very Thank sweet. you. It was wonderful. Very sweet. Oh, nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Stick stick around in the green room. We'll come back to you. Okay, that Kenny. My yeah. gosh, how cool is that? Now you must. Be it, is, it is pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's pretty Come cool. On. You know, to get families together and that can get along. You know, I call my mom every day. You know, it's uh, yeah. I. Tr I try to, mom. I, I I try to. Sometimes I'm in the middle of stuff and I I go, oh, that's I can't call her. It's midnight. But uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it's it's cool, man. And we we've actually the family's actually. We we text each other. We didn't bring my son on. We got to bring Nick on next right. time. He's a cool dude, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. 
That is yeah. nice. I, I mean, we, I, I know for me, I just appreciate the fact that you, you know, you want to share that and, 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 and be transparent like that because it, it just, you know what it does. It just kind of, it anchors everybody. It kind of makes us all go, yeah. Oh, we're all kind of the same or, you know, it just, it makes us feel. And when you feel that you grow up around a family that you yeah. love, you still connect uh, with, that's awesome. I'll have to say, I mean, admittingly, I put my career ahead of everything. I was ruthless about my career, and I would I would miss uh, uh, weddings, funerals. I would I didn't care if I worked on on people's birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, New Year's. Uh, most of my life, I put my career ahead of everything, uh, and so I, I'm in a way very grateful that I'm at that point in my life where I'm still. My career is very very important, but my but family is very very important too. Yeah. Well. There's no one does it alone, right? No one's a success by themselves yeah. as an island, and you, and yeah. it's great to come from a solid foundation. And when it all runs to runs to heck, you can you know you got somebody that got yeah. your back. So well, listen, this has been awesome. I mean, yeah. we we tried this on on the fourth, and we said you know let's open it up again. Yep. We really appreciate all the callers. Uh, if we yes. did a question, we're sorry about that, Kenny. I know there were some more in in yeah. my uh, in my bucket list here, but we we just didn't get to them. We'll so. do it next week, everybody. We'll be back we'll, next week. We'll do it again. I just want to drop a couple one liners about the book. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the book in the future. Um, so yes. please, if you anyone who's uh, who has Kenny's book. Um, a, there's an audio version coming. It's 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 to be uh, produced first and so yeah. on, but that's coming. But we're going to do a special show about the book, and um, I think we have to talk about John Fogarty. I mean, yes, a 25 year career there. <laughs> oh my God, and the hits and the songs he's written. Come on, right? I mean, yeah. there's just so much to talk about. But so uh, we appreciate everyone uh, tuning in and 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 listening to this. And Kenny, what a pleasure it is to meet your family and. God bless your mom. I hope, uh, like, I hope she, well, you know what? I hope she's right. She's, she's at, I'm, what you, I'm not going to leave them. <laughs> no, man, she's she not going, not, she's not going anywhere. She's not going nowhere. I love it. Well, I see where you get the feisty spirit. Yes. Yeah. I see where you get that. I know. So, uh, all yeah, right. we'll do this again and uh, thanks for everyone who joined us live and uh, please send us comments and, and, and so on and share. Yep. We'll be back again with a show, a show, uh, really, really soon, uh, and we'll we'll give us some ideas. Hey, I like the wine show idea, by the way. Let's do it. That sounds brilliant. We'll have everybody right. get the same bottle. We'll compare. Absolutely. Okay, yep. Kenny. Nice to see you, buddy. All you right, take see care. You. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.